Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a sustainable dividend portfolio. The content that we discuss is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. In today's video we're going to address the latest company on the Is It Time To Buy series. Remember if you want a company to be submitted to the Is It Time To Buy series and be the next video made then you can add it to the list in the post in the members area if you click on that join button right next to subscribe down there. The reason I made it a members only submission is just because of the number of requests I mean, it wasn't fair that I didn't have time to make all of them so it's now on a priority submission basis but videos will always be available for everyone to watch on the channel. As always these videos aren't a recommendation to carry out any activity whether buy, sell or hold but I'm just giving my thoughts and can serve as a basis for your own due diligence. In today's video we're going to take a deeper look at BAE Systems, ticker symbol BA, listed on the London Stock Exchange. Not to be confused with Boeing, which is also BA, but on the New York Stock Exchange. This one is a UK listed company, which means it's ideal as it means there's no withholding taxes on the dividends, and what you see is effectively what you get with the yield. So what type of company is BAE Systems? BAE Systems provides defence, aerospace and security solutions worldwide. The company operates through five segments, electronic systems, cyber and intelligence, platform and services, air and maritime. The electronic systems segment offers electronic warfare systems, navigation systems, military communication systems and data links, and electric drive propulsion systems. The Cyber and Intelligence segment provides solutions to modernise, maintain and test aircraft, radars, missile systems and mission applications that detect and deter threats to national security. It also offers data intelligence solutions to defend against national scale threats to the United Kingdom government and allied international governments. The Platforms and Services segment manufactures combat vehicles, weapons and munitions as well as provides ship repair services and the management of government-owned munitions facilities. The air segment develops, manufactures, upgrades and supports combat and jet trainer aircraft. The maritime segment designs, manufactures and supports surface ships, submarines, torpedoes, radars and commanding combat systems, and supplies naval gun systems. The company was founded in 1970 and is headquartered in Farnborough, United Kingdom. In a snapshot, here are the key dividend facts about the company. At the time of writing, BAE Systems was trading at 724 pence a share. BAE Systems dividend at 3.36 is higher than the bottom 25% of dividend payers in the UK market, which cuts off at 1.56. Earnings have grown by 35.3% over the past year, and revenue is forecast to grow at 5.33% over the next year, although that could change with the ramping up of defence spending across the EU and NATO, as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now we've seen what the company does, we've seen its dividend information snapshot, let's check out the rules of the dividend experiment and see if the company is a good fit for the dividend experiment portfolio. If you're not familiar with the rules then I've made a video with an overview of each rule and that video can be found in one of the early videos in this Is It Time To Buy series playlist. If I remember I'll also add a card direct to the video at the top right hand corner of the, this video. If I don't remember and you can't find it, just let me know in the comments. Ok, let's go through the rules. Rule number 1, the company pays a dividend or is likely to pay in the immediate term. Like we saw in the dividend snapshot, BAE does indeed pay a dividend and at 3.36 it's within the range of the dividend experiment guidelines where I usually target between 3 and 8%. So not exactly a high yield, but it's within that range. No withholding tax on this one, which is a bonus, and means the yield still falls within the range after tax considerations. BAE Systems only pays twice a year, so an interim and final payment in November and June respectively. Now this isn't my ideal payment schedule, but not a deal breaker, so that's a pass for rule number one. Rule two, the company is a natural dividend payer judging from its industry or business model. BAE is in the industrial sector, and more specifically it's in the defence and aerospace industry. Industrials are generally good for paying dividends and a lot of dividend aristocrats are in the industrial sector and I rank it pretty highly in the tier list I talked about in my video on natural dividend payers and what that means. Aerospace and defence is quite a cost intensive industry to be in 
which means that if there are new entrants to the market, they certainly won't be paying dividends. Also, it's good to see lower payout ratios for these types of companies, in case they need to invest the capital elsewhere, like research and development, for example. The good thing about defence and aerospace is that their typical customers, i.e. national governments, have deep pockets and usually a consistent and pressing need for the products and services being sold. BAE Systems did actually pause, but not cut exactly, their dividend back in 2020 due to COVID and uncertainty regarding that. They quickly reinstated the dividend, so I'll give it a pass here, but there is some risk as they've demonstrated they might be willing to pause if the future becomes uncertain for the company. Rule 3. The company should be a top player in its industry. We can look at Guru Focus to have a preliminary look on whether a company can or has achieved market dominance in its industry. If we look at the Guru Focus pie chart for UK, Ireland, Aerospace and Defence, we can see that the biggest companies are BAE Systems at 46.8%, Rolls-Royce Holdings at a smaller 24.7%, then Megit at a much smaller 14.6%. Now, US competitors such as Lockheed Martin do have an established presence within the UK and other areas that BAE Systems operates in, but it's hard to say that it's not a top player in the aerospace and defence industry. According to the ranking table of the 2021 Global Defence Companies at Defence News, BAE ranks in 7th, so 7th biggest or most important defence company in the world. The only companies ahead of it are Lockheed Martin, Raytheon Technologies, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, and the Aviation Industry Corporation of China. It's also the only European company in the top 10. Rule 4. Aim to buy the company at a historically great price. BAE is good value based on its PE ratio, 12.9, compared to the UK aerospace and defence industry average at 22.9. Compared to the market, BAE is also good value based on its PE ratio, as the UK market in general is at 16.8. That's pretty good as a comparison, but let's take a look at the five-year average dividend yield as an alternative measure of value. Now this five-year average dividend yield is at 4.03, whilst the current dividend yield is at 3.36%. So this implies that either the dividend has fallen substantially or that the company is trading at higher than historic value. BAE Systems has actually risen about 30% year to date so that goes some way in explaining why the yield is not at a historic high, rather than the company cutting the dividend. So it's not as good value as the beginning of the year, but still decent value based on the PE ratio. So we can give it a decent passing score for this measure, but it's not exactly the rush out to buy value as it might have been even just a month ago. Rule number five, the company is growing and innovating even as it matures. Many people are going to assume that BAE Systems suddenly became interesting as a company to buy because of the weaponry and warfare related systems, and that is somewhat promising, but also I think the cyber security segment should not be overlooked either. Since 2003, the Eurofighter Typhoon has been at the forefront of Royal Air Force Corporations, but it's to be replaced by Tempest in 2035. So that's promising in terms of planes, and from sources who understand this type of thing, i.e. not me, it's likely to be a more superior plane, or at least better marketed, than European competitor planes in the same niche like the Dassault Rafale. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, European countries, most notably Germany, have pledged to increase their defence budget to counter Russian aggression in the region, so things are adding together for a positive near and medium term for BAE systems. What I'm personally also bullish on for BAE is its cyber security segment, and how it syncs with the UK's new cybersecurity strategy they launched at the end of last year. The whole review is quite long and detailed, but essentially the strategy's vision is to ensure that the core government functions are resilient to cyber attack, strengthening the UK as a sovereign nation, and cementing its authority as a democratic and responsible cyber power. BAE and other British-based companies like Darktrace, for example, are certain to play a role in the UK's strategy, as per the implications of this report. Rule 6. The company is a sustainable dividend payer. According to GAAP, or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, the payout ratio is a very reasonable 44%. This is pretty comfortable payout ratio and pretty content with this. The dividend experiment guidelines used to have a solid 75% cutoff ratio, but it's now more flexible. Either way, at 44%, it's well within the requirements we're looking for for dividend sustainability. 
Overall, it's a fairly easy pass this time round. Rule number seven, the company has a history of payments. Aside from the brief pause in 2020, the company has a stable and generally rising history of payments spanning over 10 years, and is considered a dividend aristocrat as it's paid the dividend since 1999. Relatively easy pass for BAE systems for rule seven too. Rule eight, the company must have a strong moat. Having government as a customer or client is a, is a decent moat, especially for a big, already established company. New entrants for this type of market have a big uphill struggle ahead of them. First, it's incredibly cost-intensive to create something better than that's already available by incumbents, and creating prototypes and research and development is not cheap. Once a product has been created, as a new company, you also need to have either better salesmen or better relationship managers than those already in place, as trust is incredibly important when it comes to a defence. And sometimes governments might prefer to go for a sure bet rather than a risky but potentially better upstart to offer contracts to. For those reasons, I'd say that BAE Systems has a sufficient moat and passes Rule 8 of the dividend experiment. Summary and verdict. It's pretty clear that we've missed a big run-up on this company and that makes it harder to say that right now is a good time to buy in terms of value. I think the company has a bright future and deserves the price rise that it's seen this year as a lot of factors are coming together for a big boost for BAE Systems. As I make this video, the price is still rising, but we'll have to see what it gets to once the video goes live, but I would say it is a buy for now. If the yield dips below 3%, it gets a lot less interesting for me, and of course, ideally would have bought earlier this year. I think if the price is still below 750 pence per share, I would be interested in buying, but after that, it has a lot less potential. With the increase in budget spending in Europe, the new Tempest plane coming soon, and cyber security becoming an industry likely to stay in the forefront for the future, on top of a sustainable yield above 3%, BAE system seems like a good choice to add to the dividend experiment. What do you think of BAE systems? Perhaps it suits your investing style, or perhaps you hate it? Leave your comments and thoughts below. I always really like to see what you guys think. If you liked this video, and if you got this far, you probably do, I think you'll love the dividend experiment. Here are some things that you can do next. First, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can stay informed for every video and update. I'll be making a whole range of videos that should help you on your journey to build a sustainable dividend portfolio. Next, if you want to stay up to date with the eToro portfolio, the daily dividend pie updates, any special offers or sometimes even get free stuff, then click the link in the description to sign up to my email. I'll only send you things that I think will be interesting for you. Right now I'm giving away my free 16 page guide that explains my philosophy on dividend investing so if you want your copy then go and sign up right now. Third, use the link in the description to head over to eToro to see how the dividend experiment is going right now live and you can even join along if you like too. Finally, open up a brokerage and get started building a sustainable dividend portfolio. I have some that I recommend in the description and some will even give you a free share to start you off. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. See ya!